Half-Life turns 25 this year, which isn't going to date this video at all. And a lot of people are going to say a lot of things about it. About how it revolutionized the shooter genre, how it pushed narratives with its use of environmental storytelling and scripted sequences, how its AI challenged players more than ever before. And that's all true. But one thing I'm sure most people won't talk about is how it revolutionized user-made content. While games that came before it did have modding tools eventually, Half-Life came with Worldcraft, the tool Valve used to actually make levels themselves. So the early internet and gaming magazines with their cover discs were quickly awash with new maps to the game. And as time went on, people became ever more skilled with the tools, and even developed their own to allow for the engine to be modified further, which meant that mods just got bigger and bigger. That's what I'm here to talk about. And since Half-Life is best known for its single player aspect, it only makes sense to focus on that. So to celebrate Half-Life turning 25, I'm gonna take a look at 25 of what I consider some of the most unique, entertaining, and worthwhile single player add-ons to come out over the years, along with their sequels, spin-offs, and related content. But before we get into the entirely original mods, I'd like to give a shout out to some fan-made mods that are based on official releases. Backlife is a pretty fun idea that's also surprisingly straightforward. What if you went through all the Earth-based levels in Half-Life, but in reverse? Starting at the Zen Portal Chamber, this mod makes you essentially retrace your steps from the original game and head all the way back to the tram ride that brought you into Black Mesa in the first place. Does that sound bonkers? It kind of is, but it's surprisingly entertaining, especially as you get the long jump module, letting you race your way through all sorts of obstacles that proved a hassle in the original game. I'd imagine that addition alone would make this great for speedrunners, but if you've played the original game a fair few times and want to try something different, this is definitely that. There's not really a whole lot more I can add to this. It's the original game just backwards, with a few tweaks where needed to help you actually make it through. Most of it's pretty straightforward, but there's one or two moments that may stump you. So if you're going to give this a go, and I do recommend it, just be aware you might be able to use switches through walls in places. Decay Singularity is based on the co-op expansion that was developed exclusively for the PS2 port of Half-Life, and was subsequently brought over to PC by a group of fans. That version remained reliant on co-op, however, as does the subsequent port of it to Sven Co-op. Clue's kind of in the name there, with the only way to play it solo being to constantly switch between the two in-game characters, which wasn't great, since the non-player controlled one would literally just stand there and occasionally shoot at enemies that got a bit too close. Decay Singularity, however, is an attempt to take that fan-made PC version and subsequently tweak it so that it can be played properly in single player. And to be honest, I think it does a pretty good job. If you've never played Decay, then it's a pretty interesting expansion, telling the story of Doctors Colette Green and Gina Cross as they bring the sample up to the test chamber, help Dr. Rosenberg send out a message for help to the military, so yes, that's all his fault, and subsequently aid new character Dr. Keller to shut down the portals, at least temporarily. It's not essential to play, but if you're a Half-Life fan, then it does provide some fascinating looks at how characters ended up where they did and what caused certain events. This is the most recent release on this entire list. Version 1.3 was released the morning I wrote this entry, just to really date the video. But by the time you get to play it, hopefully it should have all the issues fixed and it becomes a solid way to play through this. The author is pretty good at updating the mod to fix issues. They did the same for Backlife, their previous mod, and I see no reason for them not to do so here. There is another project of a similar nature, Decay's Solo Mission, and I would be focusing on that one if I knew what was going on with it. At time of writing, Solo Mission only has a demo with the first three chapters, while Singularity can be played from beginning to end. That said, Solo Mission does look to be a more comprehensive reworking of all the maps, so when it's done, it'll probably supplant Singularity, whenever that happens to be. Supposedly, the author wanted to get it out by the end of 2023, but it's currently November and we've heard nothing for months, so I guess they're operating on Valve time? Which is appropriate, I guess. Gunman Chronicles originally started life as a total conversion before Sierra, the original publishers of Half-Life, took notice and realised how impressive it was, figuring it could stand on its own. So they released it as a full standalone title, similar to what they did with Blue Shift, only far more justifiably because Gunman Chronicles is actually kind of amazing. It's a sci-fi space western affair, with a full four to six hour long campaign that'll take you across multiple planets, fighting multiple different foes and firing multiple nifty weapons that are shockingly customizable. Aside from the underlying gold source engine, pretty much everything is new. Textures, models, music, you name it. This is an epic, no doubt about it. And if you've never owned the game, it's well worth checking out because it really is firing at all cylinders. Everything I've mentioned, all top notch. I don't think anything built on the gold source engine has looked quite this good before. And frankly, it's a thoroughly entertaining time all around. But if it was released as a standalone product, how can you play it? 
Well, after Sierra went through numerous owners, the rights were basically dropped and forgotten, making this abandoned ware in the truest sense of the word. And so, people have converted it back into a mod for Half-Life, which is still freely available to download to this day. Like I say, you should absolutely give it a go. There's really nothing quite like this in terms of Half-Life mods, and the sheer passion and love poured into this shines through in almost every aspect. It's a great time, no doubt about it. So saddle up, partners. You're in for a good old rollicking time. Half Pain is pretty much exactly what you think of when you hear that title. It's Half-Life, but with Max Payne as the player character instead of Gordon Freeman. So you wear that iconic leather jacket instead of an HEV suit, health stations now have painkillers in them, you can do will pistols, and, of course, you can use bullet time. But there's actually a lot more to this mod than that. There's a whole ton of new stuff here. Max himself will offer narration to certain events, just like he did in his own games. There's an all-new nightmare level after you get knocked out by the military. There's VR missions, there's random gameplay mods. There's even Twitch integration if you're into that sort of thing. And the weird thing is, it all works shockingly well. If you ever wanted to replay Half-Life but are tired of going through the same old levels with the same old gameplay, this is probably one of the best ways you can do so, and for added measure, there's just a ton of extras as well. It's a lot of fun, and when the action kicks in, it works so much better than you'd think. Just be aware that things won't feel too different during the quieter moments of the original game, and Zen is going to be harder due to the lack of health. Painkillers only get you so far, you know. Induction is essentially a series of maps that take place prior to the events of the base game. From Freeman's first day at Black Mesa and meeting with Eli, to what happens when you sign up to do the hazard course, to a race through vents to help Dr. Kleiner after he's locked himself out of his office. These are all short but entertaining little glimpses into life before everything went wrong in Nevada. Made by the same developers of Field Intensity, which, don't worry, we'll get to, this is an extremely well-made series of levels based on glimpses seen in other mods like Decay. And the latest versions have full English voice acting, as opposed to Russian voices with English subtitles, and achievements just to really make you go for 100% completion. It's not super long, and admittedly the voices aren't one-to-one -one with the proper official voice actors, but the passion that's gone into this is clear through every moment, and it's just a short, sweet, enjoyable expansion of life in Black Mesa. Uplinked is based on Uplink, the demo for Half-Life which consisted of a section that was cut from the original game. Other mods attempt to insert these levels back into the main campaign by having you randomly teleport to them during the Lambda Core chapter and completely break the flow of the game in the process. But this remake not only adds them into the original game at an earlier point, near the start of the Forget About Freeman chapter, but also completely remakes them so that they both flow in and out of the main game much smoother, but also greatly expands and improves on them. Fortunately, the start menu lets you jump straight to these new levels rather than have you replay the entire game to reach them, though that's also an option. And as you do go through them, you'll find that the level design, puzzles and combat are all fantastic. The levels feel right at home here, to the point that if it's been a while since you played the original game, you might not even know these aren't made by Valve. That's how well integrated and high quality these maps are. Plus, if you have played that demo before, there'll come a point where everything suddenly clicks and it's one of the most satisfying realizations you'll have. There's other ways to experience Uplink. The original levels have been more faithfully remade as a separate mod called Uplink Extended. Well, there's also another full reimagining of the levels called Signal Lost that so far has only released the first chapter, Dimensional Malfunction. If you want to play through these levels in the context of the original game, I'd say this is the best way to do it. Okay, I think that's enough stalling. Let's get on to the actual 25 entirely original mods, which is actually more like 35, but yay, yeah, whatever. Black Ops puts you into the shoes of a Black Operations soldier, Declan Walker, as he's tasked with tracking down a former member of Black Mesa and, more importantly, the briefcase he stole on the way out. Chasing him across, over and under Metro City, you'll encounter familiar foes summoned by the more recent experiments at the nearby research facility, all while tracking down the elusive Dr. Gallagher. What sets Black Ops apart, more than the change in character, is the setting. Metro City feels like an actual city, from rundown apartment buildings to the subway, shipping docks to Chinatown, nightclubs to warehouses. The locations you visit are so different to your typical ones that the mod can't help but stand out. It helps that they're all pretty well made, with unique and entertaining paths to find and make your way across. And while doing so as a black-up soldier doesn't feel too different from the norm, the places you go, not to mention the night vision you use rather than a torch, does make a world of difference, as do the comic-style cutscenes you'll experience that help to convey the story. It's not a flawless experience. I found the night vision to be a tad buggy, though quick saving, starting a new game, and quick loading was a brute force fix, and sometimes the level design is a little unclear on the paths you need to go. If in doubt, look up, check for narrow ledges, and keep an eye out for vents. But the sheer uniqueness of the experience, not to mention the ending, do an awful lot to help this one feel like one of the greats. Also, there's a Redux version of the mod floating around. I don't recommend that one, despite the HD models, because it fundamentally changes the way the gameplay works, and in almost every single aspect, it's a massive downgrade. 
What I would recommend is Half Pain Black Ops, which is pretty much exactly what the name implies. The Black Ops mod merged with the features of Half Pain, complete with HD models and such. Aside from the much more limited health, it's pretty good. And considering the mod already took influence from Max Payne, it's a good combo. Cage is a mod that started life as an entry into a community made mod, more on those later, and was spun off into its own standalone release that's actually available through Steam for the princely sum of nothing. Frankly, it deserves to be on Steam because its tale of a random nobody being taken prisoner for doing something and escaping is way better than that plot synopsis makes it sound. Featuring some fantastic level design, good combat encounters, a wicked sense of humour, plenty of secrets, including one that makes you go to a real life website, which is a huge amount of effort to go to for what's ultimately nothing more than a joke, a built in achievement system and one of the most amazing endings I've ever seen outside of Far Cry Blood Dragon, there's a lot to like about this one. And if it feels like I'm being light when talking about this, that's only because I don't want to spoil any of the surprises this has in store. If you're in the mood for some classic Half-Life and are up for a challenge, this is an easy recommendation. Chemical Existence is a total conversion that puts you in the shoes of an ordinary computer programmer on his way to visit his sister when he's waylaid in an unknown city, caught up in a gang war and ultimately gets drawn into a fight against an evil chemical manufacturer. It's wild, and the plot kind of goes off the rails the further along you go, which certainly makes for an amusing experience. Being one of the earliest mods of its kind, it came out in 2000, it's no surprise that it can struggle to hold its own 20 years later, but it definitely has it where it counts. The combat is challenging, but engaging, the level design is pretty decent, and the whole experience flows pretty well. It's mostly the visuals that hold this one back. They might have done the job back then, but time certainly hasn't been kind to them. And while the blocky models do have a certain charm to them, I know most people these days won't want to put up with them. Fortunately, as with several other mods on this list, there's been a remod, where someone's gone back and reworked the mod to try and improve it. Chemical Existence is a good example where, with a little TLC, the core experience can really shine. And as such, it's that version I'd recommend, since it really takes what was in the original and polishes it to a mirror shine. And that original does deserve to be remembered, so why not remember it at its best? Cleaners Adventures is the first on this list of what I've come to call Black Mesa Tales. Mods which, like Blue Shift and Opposing Force, take place in Black Mesa around the time of the original game, just from someone else's perspective. These are some of the more common types of mods for Half-Life, largely down to practicality. Most of the assets are already there, so people tend to just reuse them and put most of their attention on making maps, which tends to work out pretty well. That said, while Cleaner's Adventures is a Black Mesa tale, it certainly doesn't rest on its laurels. Most models have been given an HD revamp. There's tons of new and improved textures, and a bunch of new code adds a few surprises. Killing zombies can now result in its head crab leaping off and attacking you for one. This is a pretty comprehensive mod, with a ton of content to get through and plenty of vents to crawl through. And for the most part, it's all pretty well made. It's not perfect. Like I say, there's a lot to get through, and not all of it is fun, and it's a bit glitchy in places. Most infamously, Towards the end, when an HEV suited scientist runs into a lift, due to clipping issues there's a chance they'll take damage and die, resulting in a fail state. I've found that if you stand directly in front of him, that should avoid it, or you can download a fan-made patch that helps deal with it. But on the whole, this is still a pretty impressive mod that does quite a bit right, even if the timeline is a bit messy and the Russian dialogue can mean the story is a bit tricky to understand. Not that there's much to understand, since, you know, we all know the plot of Half-Life, so... The Corporal Collins trilogy is, as the name implies, a series of three mods, along with a spin-off, that I suspect most people aren't even aware of. Largely because it's not actually called the Corporal Collins trilogy, that's just the name I use to refer to them. It starts with Operation Rosenberg, a Black Mesa tale that puts you in the shoes of Corporal Timothy Collins, an HECU Marine tasked with finding the titular Dr. Rosenberg, as he and Barney try to make their escape from Black Mesa to the nearby Area 99 research labs, which feel remarkably familiar. The follow-up, Operation Rift, is where things really get interesting, as after the events of the previous mod, Corporal Collins is tasked with going to Boomertown, no, really, to contain the alien invasion that's spread there, and sealing the dimensional rift that they're all coming from. This eventually leads to the third and final mod, Dark Future, which takes place several years later and has Corporal Collins escaping his imprisonment by the Combine, and trying to escape through some very familiar looking environments. All three of these mods are incredibly long. First time players can expect to spend anywhere up to six hours in each, and they're shockingly well made considering their length. 
The first mod is built on opposing force, so it feels very similar to that mod, though there's a few new tricks and gimmicks that try and help it feel a bit more unique, while Operation Rift takes the idea of running around a small town and really runs with it, resulting in something that actually feels pretty unique all told, even though it too is basically an opposing force mod. Then there's Dark Future, which is basically an attempt to replicate Half-Life 2 in the Gold Source engine. Not a unique idea, but by far the most successful attempt I've ever seen, from enemies and weapons having equivalent replacements, to the levels looking like they were ripped straight from the sequel, it's incredibly impressive stuff all around. Where these mods stumble is, sadly, mostly in that level design. It's pretty good for the most part, but there are points in all three when you can end up spending ages trying to find the right way to progress because you missed a key or couldn't find that one lousy data disk. Uh, a hint for Operation Rosenberg, try breaking apart the filing cabinets. Additionally, the length of these mods can wear in you after a while because they are very long. The spliced together voice lines can be a little irritating, when they're not just using a text-to-speech program. Collins, listen! is forever going to be etched into my mind. And the occasional puzzle can really leave you stumped if you aren't paying attention to everything around you, especially stuff from half an hour ago. For the most part, though, these are shockingly high-quality mods that are definitely great value for money. And if you're willing to put up with a few awkward moments here and there, you'll find there's an awful lot to enjoy about these. Oh, and as to that spin-off I mentioned, well, at the end of the first mod, Corporal Collins does eventually capture Rosenberg, but old Barney Calhoun gets away, leading him into the events of Escape from Area 99, which I'm not going to mention further because the name pretty much sums up the plot, and frankly I find it incredibly repetitive, especially if you play it right after Operation Rosenberg, because it really is more of the same, just with fewer weapons. If you're going to give it a go, I'd highly recommend giving yourself some breathing room between the trilogy and the spin-off, because believe me, burnout is a real thing here. Sticking with Black Mesa tales that don't take place in Black Mesa, Delta puts you in the shoes of technical engineer Nick Farrell at the Delta Base Complex, a parallel research station to Black Mesa. When the inevitable happens, you have to escape, ideally with as many survivors as you can keep alive, though a familiar set of foes will try to prevent that from happening. While the general ebb and flow of Delta can be somewhat similar to the original game, it very clearly doesn't take place in Black Mesa. Delta Base looks and feels like a completely different location, and the new environments feel great to make your way through. There's a lot of care and attention placed into this one, and the high quality of the mapping means the relatively long runtime doesn't result in burnout. So it's another extremely well-made mod that feels similar to the original game, but is different enough to keep your attention despite the language barrier. This is another Russian-made mod, but don't let that keep you from giving it a go. You can still muddle your way through, and it really is worth the effort. Or, alternatively, you can wait for the updated version of the mod, renamed Delta Particles, which will be released through Steam at some point. I'm not sure when, but I can practically guarantee it's going to be shortly after this video goes up, so... Yay? Another Black Mesa tale, Echoes cast you as, well, Candidate 12, as you go through the events of Black Mesa and beyond. To say more would give away a lot of the twists this mod contains, and there's some absolute gold here you really don't want to have spoiled, so I'll pretty much leave it there plot-wise, but that won't stop me gushing about everything else. Black Mesa has never looked sharper in the Gold Source engine. The visuals here are fantastic, and the level design is some of the best you'll ever see. Of all the add-ons I'm covering on this list, Echoes is the one that I would recommend the most. It's one of the greatest fan-made expansions for Half-Life I've ever experienced, and absolute masterclass of pitch perfect design from the mapping to the scripting the combat to the puzzles it, it's all amazing i really cannot emphasize just how fantastic this mod is if you told me this was an official expansion made by valve themselves i'd believe it it's that good if you haven't played this stop the video and go do so now and if you have played it before well go play it again seriously this is about as good as it gets Another fantastic Black Mesa tale is Field Intensity, which puts you into the boots of another HECU Marine, Stefan Oldfield. Though unlike Corporal Collins, you and your squad mates only make their way through Black Mesa. And I do emphasize that squad, as unlike many other mods in this setting, you're encouraged to keep your comrades with you through large chunks of this. And thanks to some fancy new coding tricks, it's easier than ever to keep track of them all. Those new features, of which there's plenty, you can customize your night vision, the HUD scales with your resolution, enemies have new attacks, there's tons of extra visual flourishes and more, are one of the big draws of the mod. But there's also the fact that the maps are just really well made, and there's a lot of them to get through, because this is another long one that'll take you a good few hours to get through. 
Made by the same team of Russians and Ukrainians that made Induction, they spent well over a decade putting this one together, and that time was well spent because the end result is a truly engaging mod with some great combat, fun little set pieces, a few wonderful touches of humour, and a plot twist that you may see coming but still deserves credit for at least being attempted. And on the flip side, it also has one of the best, hey I recognise that moment from the original game moments I've ever seen in one of these mods, so that's neat. One more Black Mesa tale before we move on to more original mods. Focal Point has you as another HECU soldier sent in as part of a rescue team after Shepard's squad goes radio silent. As you'd expect, you end up having to escape. <laughs> the maps are the highlight of this one, as it aims for a more adventure game feel, with navigation puzzles and such being a core focus. That means it stands apart from other, more combat-heavy mods. Which isn't to say there isn't any combat, but there isn't a ton, which means health and ammo are in short supply. The focus is more on the environment and trying to get through it, and as a result this has some moments where I got stuck for quite a while before spotting the solution. Almost all of them were obvious in hindsight, but you will need to pay very close attention to everything around you, and maybe think a little outside the box. The payoff is well worth it, but it may still put some people off, as might the numerous elevators. I think there's 15 or so in total, which seems a little extreme. Additionally, the mod can be a bit buggy. This thing can test even the most powerful of systems at times. You want to lock your frames per second to 60 or lower to avoid getting stuck inside lifts. And every time Valve updates Half-Life, it seems to break something new in this mod, so you'll want to be aware of that possibility going in. But if you can push through those issues, you'll find an absolutely fantastic experience that, if you can get there, has one of the best endings I've ever seen again. On to something very different now. The Halfquake series is a trilogy of mods available through Steam that starts with the original Halfquake, moves on to Halfquake Amen, and concludes, as it were, with Halfquake Sunshine. And although the first mod differs from its sequels visually, all three share a common theme. You are going to suffer. Why? You did something wrong and now you're going to pay for it by going through a series of challenging, unique, frustrating and time-wasting levels that'll really push your Half-Life skills to the limit. These are not for amateurs. You need to have mastered the base game to get through these and even then it'll be a real struggle at times. So why do it? Because it's there. You can beat these. You just have to have the patience to do so. And I do use the word patience very specifically because, well, if you know, you know. Playing through these is not going to be for everyone. I dare say a fair few people will take one look at these and immediately assume I'm mad for suggesting these at all. But I'm not just picking these mods because they're good. Although the series is very good at what it does. It's just what it does is intentionally torture you. I'm also picking these for their... <sighs> historical significance, I suppose you could say. Halfquake is a series that started as a way to hurt you and evolved into something more. Something to provide experienced players with a real challenge, while also trying to say something about the nature of man and the pointlessness of playing games that ultimately don't really achieve anything. Or maybe it really is just about sadism. One of the puzzles does literally spell it out for you. Some of the more obscure mods on this list, Half Rats A Fever Dream and its sequel Parasomnia are total conversions that style the titular Half Rats, yes, that's his name, as he goes through all manner of trials and tribulations as he, and the world around him, descend into drunken chaos and calamity. Being set in the late 1880s, these aren't the only mods to offer a more supernatural take on things. Cthulhu is another, which I'm not recommending due to its shockingly high difficulty, but I'd say these are by far the most entertaining, partly down to the interesting level design, doubly so in Parasomnia, which has you investigating a supposedly abandoned town, but also down to Half-Rats himself. In an inversion of most mods, Half-Rats is surprisingly verbose, as befitting a Victorian gentleman. He frequently speaks his mind, and his ramblings are half the charm of these mods, as is the sheer imagination and eerie atmosphere both manage to build. They're not flawless, the first mod has some questionable pathfinding for both allies and enemies, while the sequel can be very easy to get lost in and has an obnoxious final boss. But if you're willing to put up with some flaws and general jankiness, you'll find these to be pretty unique mods that will keep you going for a good while. And if the saga of Half Rats has you wishing for a third installment, check the mod DB page to see the story in written form, which is sadly all we'll likely to get. But at least we get to know how the saga ends, so... Back to Black Mesa now for something a little familiar, yet different. Invasion is one of a number of mods that function as a what-if sequel to the original game, in this case having Freeman be rescued from the clutches of the G-Man by a few surviving scientists, only for the military to appear and ruin everything, as they want to do. From there, you have to embark on a surprisingly long journey across Black Mesa to shut down the invasion from Zen for good. Invasion is a hugely ambitious French mod and features an almost complete overhaul of the HEV suit, 
which makes sense since you're wearing a completely different one now. You can collect health kits and batteries and apply them to specific parts of the body. The grunts have far more variations and can be dismembered in a variety of ways. There's new enemies, a drivable tank. There's a lot of stuff going on in this and it's all hugely impressive on a technical front. Gameplay wise, the mod can be pretty challenging. The enemies can absolutely wreck you if you're playing on higher difficulties, which can be frustrating, and you no longer have a built-in torch, forcing you to switch from your weapon to a lighter, like in Doom 3, which can be frustrating, though it's hardly a deal breaker. Finally, there's the act of actually installing it. There's more than a few patches and optional updates that are needed, making this one of the more fiddly mods on this list to actually get working properly. If you can put up with all that though, there's a lot to like about this one, by which I mean there's over 40 maps and they're all massive, so you get hours of content to go through here. As I say before, burnout is a very real possibility, so if you give this one a go, prepare to be in this for the long haul, and to hate Zen creatures all over again in a brand new way. Night at the Office is a total conversion that has absolutely nothing to do with Black Mesa. You're just an office worker who has to deal with a difficult situation when a bunch of terrorists take over the building you and your co-workers are now stuck in. Managing to escape, you make your way between floors as you try and figure out why your office has been invaded and hopefully help to repel those invaders while keeping casualties to a minimum. Being set where it is, you'll be going back and forth between floors trying to get various things done and the mod makes surprisingly strong use of these maps. They're well designed in a pretty realistic sense and you'll definitely become familiar with them as you go through the story. That story is another strength of the mod. It may not necessarily be the strongest in the world, but it's definitely unique among Half-Life mods and everyone involved, voice actors and all, is giving it their all, so the characters are fairly well-rounded as a result. There's even a fun new training course that's unbelievably charming. The whole mod is, honestly. It's interesting and challenging in just the right way. Plus, when you beat it, you'll get a password that you use by going into the mod's folder and finding a password-protected zip file with a bunch of in-universe documents, which is just super neat. At first glance, Operation Black Thunder appears to just be another opposing force mod, but it's actually not. This is an entirely original add-on for Half-Life set in a future where a terrorist organization is taking control of several military bases, and you, as Corporal Roger McAllen, are tasked with infiltrating one of these bases and defusing the missiles within to help de-escalate the terrorist threat. As you'd expect, that's easier said than done, as the bad guys are dug in deep and determined not to let you succeed. There's a real attempt to go for a more realistic military setting here than in most other mods, which makes things stand out significantly. You'll be going through typical military locales, there'll be tanks, planes, trains and all sorts going on, and your arsenal consists of more realistic looking weaponry. The shotgun has had its secondary fire removed and you can attach a silencer to your MP5 for example. Then there's things like a new HUD that lets you see your current objective various enemy types and all sorts. The core DNA of Half-Life is still here, but with all the new stuff they've done with it, this ends up being a really impressive total conversion. Then there's the maps, which are well designed and full of fun little challenges. Whether that be navigating a field of snipers, or just making your way through a dam, the locations are going to keep you on your toes throughout. There's just a lot to like about this one, except for the ending, which feels like kind of a cop-out. Still, it's mostly a good mod to play through, whether you're playing the original or the remod, which just gives the mod a bit of a glow up, because frankly, it stands up on its own as is. Speaking of more realistic military mods, Paranoia and its sequel are fully standalone total conversions that push the visual capabilities of the Gold Source engine to extremes, aimed to be much more realistic shooters, with all new arsenals, NPCs and enemies. Putting you in the boots of a Russian officer in the Secret Service, you're called out to investigate a research facility, only to discover things that man should never have uncovered. Both of these are aiming for more of a horror vibe, and they can be incredibly unnerving as a result. The lighting system plays a huge part in that. You're often fumbling around in dark, uncomfortable corridors and tunnels, and the creatures that come after you are unsettling to say the least. It's less about jump scares and more about mood and atmosphere, which works much better than you'd think. The first paranoia is the superior one, thanks to its slow build-up, great level design and engaging combat system. All areas the sequel stumbles a little with, though it doesn't outright fail. It was developed by a different team, comprised, again, of Russians and Ukrainians, and it had a rather troubled development as members of that team kept vanishing, to the point that by the end of development there were only one or two people left working on it, so the issues it has are understandable given the circumstances. Even so, I think these are both still worth playing, the first one more so, given the impressive nature of the work put into them. Despite their origins, they don't really feel like mods, more so their own thing, which is a testament to how well these come together despite their flaws. Like I say, worth trying, but maybe not at the height of summer. These are spooky mods, so make sure those lights are turned off. When it comes to lists of best Half-Life mods, Pocus 646, which I think I'm pronouncing right, and its sequel Vendetta are often ranked right near the top, and for good reason. 
Casting you as Damien Reeves, a lowly technician working for the Poker 646 organization in Nation City some 13 months after the events of Half-Life, it looks like the aliens are coming back. But the Poker 646 tech labs have already prepared for this. And after an accident knocks you out, turns out you're the only one who can activate all four generators dotted around the city and seal off the alien portals for good. First coming out in 2003, these mods have all the feel of a total conversion, though technically they aren't as they reuse the Zen creatures. So they're a partial conversion. You'd be hard pressed to notice though given the visual overhaul and the new arsenal you have. The first Poker 646 has very few traditional weapons, forcing you to rely on things like a nail gun and a hunting rifle to survive, along with a few other neat twists. And Nation City is a pretty different setting as well. Much like with Black Ops, this new location truly does feel like a city, with all the usual landmarks you'd expect, even if the library is a little on the Resident Evil bigger than it should be side of things. All of this is handled beautifully, with the quality of pretty much everything being shockingly high. The action, the puzzles, the pacing, all of it is pretty top notch, besides the ending which kind of comes out of nowhere and leaves things on a bit of a weird note. Not bad per se, just odd, but everything up to that point, near perfection. Sadly, though Vendetta pushes the bar even higher with its visuals, the actual levels and general gameplay is a slight step down in quality, and it trades in the underdog feel the original had for one of a man bent on revenge, which is fine, but it does lose a lot of the charm of the original. Your nail gun, for example, is replaced with a proper machine gun, and you'll be in heavy firefights with human enemies a lot more. Again, it's not bad at all, but it does mean Vendetta feels different from the original, and I think the original has a bit more personality to it. They are still both very much worth playing though, and the best way to do that is with the Anniversary Edition, which was released to celebrate the mod's 15th anniversary, just in case Half-Life being 25 wasn't enough to make you feel old. Project Quantum Leap was a collaborative project where most of the maps were made by different authors. The end result is 20 maps that are almost completely unconnected, played one after the other with very little chance to breathe. The sheer variety on offer is the big draw, and on that front it delivers in spades, which you'd expect given 15 different people contributed to this. And if you're a fan of combat, this mod has you covered, because that's pretty much the only things these maps even remotely have in common. Not all of the maps included are classics, which is to be expected given the variety on offer, but there's more hits than misses here, and even if you're not a fan of one, stick with it because the next map will probably pick back up. For example, one is an early version of Caged, that mod I mentioned earlier, while another is someplace else, because yep, this is where that map originated, and if you don't know about someplace else, it's basically a prequel to Minerva Metastasis, a Half-Life 2 mod so good it got the author a job at Valve, so yeah, that one's a definite highlight. Although a follow-up project was planned, it fell through, and then was basically reborn as Issues, which, while similar, removed one key limitation. Authors were no longer constrained by a single map. The end result, 18 maps made by 9 authors, features a real step up in overall quality and variety, with settings from World War I France to a wild zen level and all manner of imaginative locales, the entries here are basically mini campaigns, which feels like a natural progression. It's a step up in quality and it's a much more easy recommendation. And then they made another one with reissues, which ups the quality even further. 30 maps made by some of the best Half-Life mappers out there. The end result is the longest of the three mods, but the quality on display is unquestionably high. From treasure hunting to warehouses, from a futuristic base to a Persian town, there's plenty here to keep you going. And it's all pretty damn great. All three of these mods are worth playing, even if the average quality of the map starts relatively low, because aside from the sheer variety on offer, these truly show just how far mapping for Half-Life has come. From some rather average but entertaining stuff to some of the best you will ever see, these three mods chart the history of fan-made add-ons as a whole, and as a result, I think their place on this list is more than deserved. The Residual Life series is a collection of astonishingly long Black Mesa tales by a Korean modder, and his work is really quite something. Comprising of three mods so far, White Force, Residual Point, and Residual Life, the latter two of which are bundled together at this point, there are an astonishing number of maps here which will take you a frankly insane amount of time to get through. And not just because they're long maps, they're also hard. White Force is essentially a proof of concept for the residual mods, though the maps themselves are pretty different and there's still a substantial number of them. But both it and Residual Point put you in the shoes, or clean suit rather, of W. Jack Son, a research associate at Black Mesa's Biodome Labs, who gets caught up in that good old resonance cascade and from there you pretty much know the drill plot-wise. Residual Life, meanwhile, has you as W. Sora Kim, a reactor operation engineer. 
And while her journey feels pretty similar to the previous ones at the start, it gradually turns into something much more, as the author has taken influence from several of Mark Laidlaw's novels, among other influences, and the end result goes, well, kind of off the rails by the end. There's plenty of Black Mesa tales out there. I've already mentioned several of them on this list, and another one is possibly my least favourite Half-Life mod full stop, but I really wanted to highlight this series because of how much work has gone into it. This guy's put over a decade into these, and that dedication really does show through. And even if I have my own personal issues with the mods, the difficulty later on, not to mention the Zen levels, these are the kinds of mods where the author includes maps he deleted as a bonus. That says a lot even if his definition of easy differs somewhat from mine. Another of the more recent mods on this list, Slimy Situation is actually the result of a mapping competition based around the theme of using toxic waste in a creative manner, which this won by a landslide. And playing it, you'll quickly understand why. It's an absolute masterclass in tightly designed mapping, with three exquisitely engineered and extremely entertaining maps, and a fourth that's still pretty good, but a tad weaker than the others. Although given the author was ill with COVID and then came down with the flu while making this, the fact it's still this impressive is quite frankly staggering. From the varied and amusing ways the toxic waste is utilised, to the fun map design, to the great combat scenarios, there's so much to enjoy about this mod that to go into much detail would ruin the magic. What I will say is that though the first map does give you a time limit, it's actually a pretty generous one, so you shouldn't need to worry too much about it. Beyond that though, the joy of this mod is seeing just how creative the author got, and how well made these maps are. So yeah, take that, Cywar veteran. Your mod is one of my absolute favourites. Deal with it, buddy. Some is actually a slight reworking of a trilogy of mods compiled into a single campaign. The first of which I can't even name without centering myself because it's literally called Hunt the C followed up by Autonomy Lost and concluded with Abeyance. All three of these mods are really well designed, with you playing a female HECU marine known as Jane Doe, ha ha, who is left for dead by an assassin in the first mod, technically making it a Black Mesa tale, being forced to retrieve something at the G-Man's behest in the second part, and finally trying, and ultimately succeeding, to break free from the G-Man's grasp in the final act. All three mods try to do something slightly different. The first, as I say, is set in Black Mesa, and while there's some combat, it feels like the author has focused more on environmental puzzles than action, which is a nice change of pace. There's a similar feel, though not quite as strong, in the second, which is a different location and really feels it, even if you do spend the whole time in tunnels. The final mod, meanwhile, isn't really a mod at all. It's one single giant map, though you could easily be forgiven for not even noticing that fact, given just how much the author has managed to pack into that map. What the trilogy has across the board is some fantastic level design. Regardless of the setting, you're in for some pretty great maps to make your way through. That final one in particular, the single massive map, is especially impressive, but all three parts are, to be honest. There's a lot to make your way through. The story being told is pretty entertaining, if a tad predictable in places, and the whole thing is just a great example of how talented Half-Life modders can be. Upon its release in 2003, the gate proved to be hugely controversial, as although it was incredibly ambitious, the new coding and unbalanced difficulty proved to be hurdles too massive for many to overcome. Having played it myself, I have to concur. It's too glitchy, too difficult, and far too frustrating to play through. Which is why I'm thankful for the remod. Unlike with other examples of remods, this one is far more substantial than just giving things a visual overhaul. Most of the issues with the original are resolved as a result, allowing players to experience the mod the way it really deserves to be. And what a mod it is! Telling the tale of how you, a lone soldier, have been sent through the titular gate back to World War II to stop the Nazis from using it for nefarious purposes, your task is, of course, far more complicated than just blowing the thing up. You're going on a pretty epic adventure, from Egypt to France and beyond. So yeah, this is an incredibly ambitious mod that punched far above its weight and pretty much collapsed as a result under all the issues the original release had. I mean, it was a story-heavy mod with a lot of dialogue, and characters never moved their mouths. Like I say, the remod fixes most of these issues, meaning you get to enjoy this sweeping epic the way it was meant to, and you no longer have to worry about things like copyrighted music, or spending five minutes just sitting around in a cell, which was genuinely a thing you had to do in the original version. Not sure why the author thought that was a good idea. This isn't the only Half-Life mod to tackle the Second World War. There's also The Last Bullet, which recently had an updated release that's actually pretty good, though it's very action-heavy and lacks the narrative focus of the gate and it doesn't have a Half-Life 2 Episode 2 based sequel, which The Gate does. Though The Gate 2 is, well, it's absolutely bonkers. Pretty much an everything in the kitchen sink sort of affair, the plot is utterly bananas and doesn't come close to making a lick of sense. 
I'm not covering Half-Life 2 mods here, but if you want a so bad it's good experience, the Gate 2 has you covered. As for the Gate 1, the remod is definitely the way to play it, and play it you should if you're willing to overlook a few plot holes and don't mind some slightly unbalanced gameplay. The sheer ambition and scope of the mod definitely makes it stand out, and if you stick with it, it'll definitely stay with you long after you finish it. Speaking of unique experiences, The Trap can best be described as a prolonged series of challenges, not entirely unlike Portal. But rather than using some fancy Portal technology, The Trap is all about platforming and puzzle solving. And it's very, very good at understanding all the tricks and quirks that the Gold Source engine has. So if you want to take on this mod, you'd best be a master of them as well. This is, most emphatically, not for those who don't have a thorough understanding of how the engine works. For those who do though, you'll find a pretty high number of chambers to overcome, and while some may really test your patience, they're all solvable, and you'll almost certainly feel like a genius once you do crack them. There's platforming puzzles, box-moving brain teasers, teleporter traps, and more, and they're all accompanied by a portalish dark humour, hidden areas, and even achievements. Again, it's not a 100% unique concept. There's other mods out there that similarly test you, such as Hazardous Course 2, which has much more of a flowing structure to it and would serve as a solid follow-up to this. But the chaptered nature of the trap makes it perfect for playing in chunks, doing a bit, stopping for a break, and then coming back when you're ready to keep plowing through. And you'll want to, because believe me, this is fiendishly addictive. Much like with The Gate, this also has a sequel for Half-Life 2 Episode 2, though this time it's actually just good in a general way. Though unlike the first trap, the Trap 2 mind block is very story heavy, with full on cutscenes and everything, so it's essentially unconnected. Still worth playing, but we're on Half-Life 1 mods, so... One of the earliest total conversions, They Hunger was initially released in three separate parts, but you'd be hard pressed not to find them all combined these days. Telling the tale of a writer, inadvertently driven off the road, who stumbles into what becomes a zombie apocalypse, things start slow but build up pretty well. Though that episodic nature does rear up throughout the mod as it goes through several climaxes only to continue on. Still, as an early example of what could be done with the engine, there's a lot to like here. The general tone is that of early Romero movies, like Night of the Living Dead, and the slightly campy fun of those movies is translated over well, with zombies asking, Why do we hunger? before the mutated police start shooting you. Eventually, you find the initial cause of the problem, but even then it just serves as a wild escalation as you move into the goofier aspects of the zombie genre. Frankensteins and Skellingtons, that sort of thing. Before climaxing in part 3 with some completely off-the-wall nonsense that's far too fun to really get upset over. Mapping-wise, while there's a relatively simple charm to the levels, they don't start off as the strongest around. The Gold Source engine struggles with outdoor environments, which this mod deals with quite a bit, so it stumbles a bit in that regard. But if you can put up with that, the mapping does improve as the mod goes on, and the sense of we're all here to have a good time that zombie movies often have never really fades, so it's easy to overlook the flaws that are here. So while the mod's not perfect, there's still a lot of good stuff here, and if you can get into its unique vibe, chances are you'll fall in love with it, just like everyone who did as it first came out. It's just a fun romp that goes on a little too long, but is still pretty entertaining. Apart from the final bosses, which pretty infamous. Also, quick shout out to They Hunger Rebuild, which is an early project that aims to remake the maps while still keeping the plot and general layout. They've only released a demo with the first third or so of episode one, but the work done is really impressive, so hopefully they can keep with it all the way through. What does the author announces that he's cancelled it just after I released this video? The two TWHL Tower mods, TWHL standing for The Whole Half-Life, the website that these were organised on, are another example of collaborative projects, but this time the contributors had a very specific restriction. All the maps had to start and end with a central stairwell. Aside from that though, each floor could be whatever each author wanted, and the results are two of the most varied, high quality and entertaining romps you're likely to come across. From loading bays to offices and laboratories, the first mod is a bit more restrained to what each author attempted, but that doesn't mean there isn't variety. Some floors are jokes, some are puzzle heavy, some are about exploration, and others are combat focused. The fact no two floors are alike is the mod's biggest strength, and the relatively short runtime means it comes across as just a bit of fun. There's some real highlights, such as the stealth one, or the one that features some impressive time manipulation, but it's overall a 7 out of 10 sort of affair. Nothing amazing, but a good time all the same. TWHL Tower 2, on the other hand, is where things get impressive in capital letters. Everything's dialed up to 11, and the quality of the maps is off the charts as a result. These are some of the most complex, interesting, and occasionally devious maps you'll ever see, and some are pretty hilarious. Obligatory mention of Half Pint. If you know, you know. 
There's even hidden collectibles, one per floor, that unlock a bonus level if you collect enough. It's all pretty damn impressive and thoroughly entertaining. So I would absolutely recommend both of these if you're after a bit of variety that still has some form of structure to it. As with the earlier collaborative mods, if one floor doesn't impress you, just keep going and before long you'll be at one that does. Variety video the spice of life. The story behind Zen Warrior is actually pretty interesting. It started life somewhat as Half-Life Chronicles, which was planned to be a multi-episode story which basically detailed an alternate path for Freeman to go through, diverting from the main campaign shortly after you first encountered the military. That mod only ever released the first episode though, and after that the project was cancelled. Someone then took the maps from that first episode, realised that the modified weapons and unusual design didn't quite lend itself to being the what-if story as originally planned, and decided to make you play as an alien grunt instead. The end result works much better than it did originally, and the short length now becomes a positive. Playing as an alien with their unique attack patterns and alternate way of healing doesn't lend itself to prolonged periods. This is the main reason I haven't included Point of View, a mod that has you playing as a Vortigaunt. But a short 10 maps or so is a perfect length for this type of concept. Those maps aren't quite up to Valve's level, but they are pretty solid, and combined with the new gameplay style, it works pretty well. Plus, the ending sequence is just fantastic and definitely deserves to be enjoyed. It's not a perfect experience, and there's going to be those who don't gel with it at all, but if you can stick with it, the payoff is well worth it. And it only makes sense to end this list back in Black Mesa, doesn't it? So, there you go. My 25, or 40, whatever, recommended single-player mods for the original Half-Life. I think I've managed to include a good variety here. I haven't just given you 25 Black Mesa tales or whatever. There's stuff set in Black Mesa, stuff set around Black Mesa, stuff that's nothing to do with Black Mesa, and whatever the heck Halfquake is. There's a lot of different stuff here, and that's testament to how flexible the Gold Source engine can be. Valve definitely hit onto a winner here, and the sheer volume of stuff people made with their tech is proof of that. And I'm not even covering the multiplayer mods that take things even further, like Counter-Strike, Day of Defeat, Natural Selection. All of these mods that I've listed are easily available, whether that be through Steam itself or sites like ModDB, and I'll be providing links to all of them in the video description, so if any of them catch your fancy, you can go and check them out for yourself. And if you think there's a mod I ever looked, please check the pinned comment, where I'll be listing the ones I deliberately chose not to cover, along with why. I do welcome your thoughts and comments, but also, some mods we thought of as classics when they came out haven't quite stood the test of time. Even Half-Life is feeling a little long in the tooth in places, but for something that's 25 years old, it holds up surprisingly well. There's a reason people keep making stuff for it after all. So, there you go. 25 years of Half-Life. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go find my walker and tell those kids to get off my lawn.